I spent the last two weeks and over $2,200 testing the most popular family camping slash car camping tents on the market. I selected these tents by looking at the best selling or the most highly recommended tents from sources like REI, LL Bean, The Wirecutter, and yes, even Amazon. I then took all of these different data points and I ran them through the proprietary algorithm that is my brain in order to come up with a list of the tents that seemed to be the most popular. Then I bought all of those tents, which had prices ranging from $130 all the way up to $600, and I set them up as you can see behind you. And then I put all of those tents to the test and I scored them on 10 different categories of quality in order to give each tent an overall score out of 100. I found that some of these tents performed incredibly well while others actually broke. And so we're gonna get into all of the biggest pros and cons of each tent. And for each tent, I'll also tell you who should buy it because a higher score doesn't necessarily translate into that being the best tent for you. So without further ado, let's get in to tent number six. This is the Coleman Instant Cabin. It's currently selling for $174.99 and it is a six person size tent. In fact, I should mention that all of the tents I tested for this video are six person size. However, they all also have four person size versions available if that's the size you're interested in. I gave this particular tent a score of 37 out of 100 and for reference, I consider a score of 50 to be a roughly average middle of the road quality tent. And so that does put this tent squarely in the below average category. And let's talk about some of the reasons why with a few pros and cons. Starting with the positives, pro number one of this tent is the easy setup. In fact, Coleman advertises this as a one minute setup tent. Now, one minute is definitely a bit of a stretch, but I was able to set this tent up for the first time by myself in under 10 minutes. And if you had help, you probably could even set this tent up in less than five minutes, which is really good. And through the design of this tent, they've even eliminated some of the steps that are frustrating in other more traditional style tents. Like you don't have to feed any poles through a sleeve or anything like that, making this tent incredibly easy to set up and in fact the most easy tent to set up on this entire list. The second pro of the Coleman Instant Cabin is the price. At about $175, you could buy roughly three of these tents for about the same price as one of our more premium options that we're going to get to later in this list. Now onto the cons of the Coleman Instant Cabin. Probably the biggest con of this tent is actually the weatherproofing. I did test all of these tents in multiple days of both high winds and also rain, and on at least two different occasions, this tent leaked. And that's obviously not something you want in a tent because one of the main purposes of a tent is to keep you protected from the elements, right? And so that's a big con of this tent. The second con that's worth knowing about is the ventilation of this tent. Compared to other tents, this one does tend to get hot. And if you walk into this tent and then walk into any of the other tents on this list, you're probably gonna find it's the hottest on the inside of this tent on a warm day, especially because the airflow is a bit limited by the mesh paneling on the side, which is a bit smaller than on many other tents. And the third con of the Coleman Instant Cabin is actually the door. Now this might seem like a small thing, but you interact with the door on a tent quite frequently, and it can be one of the most frustrating things on a tent if you don't have a high quality one. So here's a couple of the things I don't like about this particular door. Number one, it is quite small for a tent door. Most tents that are six person size will have larger doors than this, and that makes it difficult to get big things like, for example, a big air mattress in and out of this tent. And another thing is that it has two zippers. And so once you get about part way done with this tent unzipping it, you have to switch hands and go to another zipper, which is a, just a little bit of more of a hassle compared to other tents that have a one singular motion unzip. So that's another thing I don't like about it. And finally, this tent does not have a YKK brand zipper. Now that's worth mentioning. It might seem again like a small thing, but that's worth mentioning because YKK is broadly recognized as the market leader in manufacturing zippers and their zippers do tend to be higher quality and more durable, making them last longer than the zippers that are not YKK brand. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, who should actually buy the Coleman Instant Cabin? I actually wouldn't recommend this tent to anyone, but there's a very specific reason for that. If you are a budget shopper or a casual camper, perhaps a beginner camper who's just looking for an affordable option to try things out in good weather, then I think actually the next tent on this list is gonna be a better option for you and it will also save you some money. So let's get right into tent number five. And this is the Coleman Sky Dome. It's currently selling for $129.99 and I gave this tent a score of 41 out of 100 which still does put it a little bit below the average mark of 50 points, but it is a few points above that instant cabin we saw just a moment ago. 
Now let's get into some of the pros and cons of the Sky Dome. Pro number one is again the setup. It's not quite as easy to set up as the Coleman Instant Cabin. However, it is nearly as easy and it is the second easiest tent to set up on this list by far. Much easier than some of the more premium options we're going to cover later, which do tend to be more complex and difficult to set up. That's a big advertising point for Coleman tents. And this tent is actually advertised as a five minute setup tent. Again, I think that's a bit of a stretch, but I was able to set this tent up for the first time without any help in under 15 minutes. And if you have some help, you probably could set it up in less than 10 minutes, which is still really good. Pro number two of the Coleman Sky Dome is the ventilation. This is one of the biggest advantages it has over the instant cabin. And if you look at the mesh paneling all around the tent, especially if you have the rain fly off, you can see that it's gonna allow a lot more airflow than what you would have gotten in the instant cabin. And this keeps it cooler inside. Even if you step inside this tent or step inside the instant cabin, you can tell that there's a temperature difference there. Pro number three of the Sky Dome is of course the price. At $129.99, this is by far the cheapest tent on this list. And it is less than $400 under the price of the top scoring tent that we're gonna to get to at the end of this video. Now for the cons of the Sky Dome. Con number one is probably the biggest thing to keep in mind if you're considering this tent, and that is the weatherproofing. Like the Instant Cabin, on the rainy days of my testing, it actually did leak, which of course is an issue, but this one, unlike the, Sky, uh, unlike the Instant Cabin, also bent in the high winds. And in fact, it bent to the point that it actually broke. And the only reason it's standing here in front of you is because I actually went through some effort to repair the pole that bent to the point where it was essentially unusable. And so if you're looking to take a tent that's gonna withstand high winds or bad weather, then think twice before getting this one. Con number two is closely related, and that is the overall build quality of this tent. There's a few things you can look at for build quality. One of them is the poles. The poles are here made of fiberglass, which is different than some of the more premium tents on this list, which of course use aluminum poles. And you can also tell by the, the fabric of the tent that it's just of a lower quality. You can especially see this in the floor. And if you look at the floor, it kind of reminds me of those really cheap, uh, like ground cloths or tarps that you can buy at Walmart that are bright blue color and you can see the plastic fibers knitted together and they just look large and you can tell that it's not the same quality as some of the really close knit fabrics that we're gonna see in more expensive tents. The third con of the Coleman Sky Dome is the storage. If we're being generous, it has one and a half storage pouches on the inside. The half is because it appears to be for the purpose of stowing the door into. And so, yeah, you could call that two. You have two pouches on the inside, but for a tent of this size, a six person size tent, that's not very much. And it also doesn't have a external storage area or vestibule, which is a feature that some of the tents we'll get into later do have. And so if you're looking for a tent that has some nice storage options, or you just really value that in your tent, then you're gonna to wanna to look at some other options. Now, finally, who should buy the Coleman Sky Dome? I think despite its significant drawbacks that the Coleman Sky Dome is still a good budget option for casual beginner campers who just want an entry level tent that's very affordable, but they can take it out on good weather camping trips. So if you're somebody who is comfortable buying a less expensive tent and maybe upgrading down the road, and if you don't mind canceling your trip, if the weather forecast looks like it's gonna be high winds or bad storms, then this could be a good tent for you. This is the Eureka Copper Canyon LX. It's currently selling for $314.95, and I gave this tent a score of 45 out of 100, which makes it the closest tent to that 50 point mark that I told you about earlier in the video, which indicates that it's a roughly average quality tent. And in fact, both in its price and in its quality, this is a pretty good example of a middle of the road tent, if you'd like to see an example of that. Now for the pros and the cons of this tent, the biggest pro is definitely the total internal space. This tent is huge, especially compared to the other tents on this list. You could actually fit six people in here to sleep on sleeping pads, which is not the case for all of these tents, even though they all are rated for six people. The six person versus four person and so on, these ratings actually aren't an industry standard rating. The manufacturers get to decide how big a tent is when they advertise it. And so when you look at the tents, it's better to look at the dimensions and how big they actually are if you walk inside. And if you do that with this tent, you'll quickly find that it's larger than all of the other ones I've tested here. It's also worth mentioning that this tent has the highest stand height. It goes all the way up to seven feet tall. And so if you're somebody who likes to be able to walk around in the tent a little bit, then this is a really good one to consider that allows you to do that. 
Pro number two of the Eureka Copper Canyon LX is the ventilation. As you can probably tell by looking at the big mesh panels that it has on all four sides, it actually has really good airflow that's allowed to pass through it. And interestingly, the rain fly that goes over the top does not go over those mesh panels. And so even with the rain fly on, it gets pretty good ventilation. And the third pro of this tent is how easy it is to pack up. That's something that you might not think about when you look at, look at different tents. You might think about the setup, but forget about the pack up, right? And for this tent, it actually is pretty easy to, to disassemble and take apart, but also it's easy to get in the bag. And this, this stow bag that they have for this Eureka tent is my favorite of any tent in this list. It's much easier than getting it, a tent into a stuff sack or something of that nature, which can sometimes be pretty difficult. So that's something to think about if you don't like the hassle of a difficult to pack away tent. Now for the cons of the Eureka Copper Canyon LX. One of the big cons of this tent is the weatherproofing. Now it didn't leak like the Coleman tents we talked about earlier. However, it did pretty poorly in the high winds. And in fact, it actually blew away during the high winds when it had no gear on the inside. So maybe if you have some gear on the inside, it helps it like kind of weight it down. But it's worth mentioning that this tent was staked down and it did actually blow away in the high winds here during my testing. Con number two might be a little bit related to that first one, but it's the stakes. The stakes in this tent are terrible. Multiple of them bent upon my first few setups and use of this tent over the last couple of weeks. And that's definitely not something that you want in a tent, especially one like this that is large and one that you want to last you for a long time. So you could solve this by going and buying some stakes uh, from a third party but of course when you buy a tent it is nice for that thing to be taken care of already finally the third con of this tent that i want to highlight is the door of all of the tents on this list i find the door of the eureka copper canyon to be the most frustrating and here's why there's a couple reasons this cover that goes over the top get snagged pretty frequently. And also it has two zippers instead of one zipper that goes all the way around. So when you get part way done with the door, you have to switch to another zipper to finish the job. Those are a couple of the things. And it also does not have a YKK zipper, which is something we talked about a little bit earlier. And so between those things, I find this tent door a little bit frustrating to use. And it also only has one door. And this is the last tent on this list that is limited to one door because all of the ones we'll cover next actually have multiple. Finally, who should buy the Eureka Copper Canyon LX? Well, I think this one is actually pretty straightforward. If you want to go camping with a large group, or if perhaps you have a large family and you want to get everybody into one tent, then this is definitely one that you should consider. It has the most internal space, as I mentioned, and also the ventilation does help keep it cool with a larger group of people. And so if that's your situation, then think about getting this tent. And if after seeing these first few tents, you feel like, oh wow, this is like a whirlwind of information, I'd like to get a more in-depth analysis, then I have good news for you. I'm actually making in-depth review videos of each of these tents in this video, and I'm gonna be publishing them over the next couple of weeks on my channel. And so if you wanna make sure that you see those and you can see the breakdown of each of the 10 categories that I've used to give them all a score, then make sure you subscribe to my channel for that. Welcome to the land of premium tents. This is the North Face Wawona. It's currently selling for $475, although you can at the moment get the older version, the 2020 model, for $450 at REI. I gave this tent a score of 65 out of 100, so that's a big leap above the last tent we covered, and also, as you saw, a big leap in price. But you get a lot for that money, so let's dive right into the pros and the cons of this North Face Wawona tent. My favorite thing about this tent is also probably the first thing you're going to notice about it, and that's this big vestibule that goes out in front of the tent. This is actually really cool. It gives you extra storage space that's outside the body of the tent, and it kind of serves as a tent slash extra rain fly combo, which of course those are two different tools, but it's combining it into one thing for this tent. And it's really nice. If you have a rainy day and you wanna be outside, you don't wanna go in your tent, you wanna leave your shoes on, you can actually do that and hang out in this area under the tent. And I think it gives a lot of extra flexibility to how you can use this tent. And so that's one of my favorite features about it. Pro number two is the weatherproofing. This is the first tent that we've covered so far that actually passed all of my fairly rigorous weatherproofing tests. It didn't leak at all. It didn't blow away in the wind. It held up quite strong to all of those conditions. And so I gotta mention that as one of the big pros of this tent. Pro number three is the ventilation. 
This actually has even a bit better ventilation than the Eureka in my opinion, and you can tell that by looking at the big mesh paneling on the front. If you look through the vestibule on the front, it also has these mesh panels that go along the sides, and it has mesh paneling in the back where the rear door is. And so the airflow in this tent is actually quite good. The final pro I wanna mention about this tent is simply the cool factor. I just think the design and the layout and the combination of features of this tent is really, really neat. And so if you want an interesting tent that's a little bit more exciting than your everyday humdrum dome tent, then I think this is a good one to look at. Now let's get into the cons of this tent. Probably the biggest con of this tent is that it is actually the smallest if you go on the inside. So if we ignore the vestibule space and just look at the inside, space of the tent where people can actually sleep. This is the smallest tent on this list. And it's rated as a six person tent, but in my testing, I don't think you could physically fit six people in here. You could do five, but that would still be pretty tight. The other con of this tent that I wanted to mention is that it is a bit more difficult to set up. So it has more poles than the, the Coleman tents, for instance, that we saw earlier, and it is more tricky to set up than those. If you have some people helping you, that'll be a bit less of a problem, but adding this whole pole system that supports the vestibule just inherently makes this tent a little bit more complex, which translates into a little bit more time consuming setup. Finally, who should buy this tent? Well, it's pretty simple. If you want a premium quality tent that is less than $500, this is your only option out of the tents that I'm reviewing today. In my opinion, it's also the best value for the money tent of anything that I'm covering here in these tests. And even though it is far more expensive than the Coleman tents, for instance, you get a lot for that money. And it's almost as good as some of the more expensive tents that are $100 or so more than this tent that we're gonna cover just in a little bit. So if you want good value for the money, if you want a premium tent for a good deal, then this is definitely one to think about. Also, this tent is for you if you want a tent that has an outdoor shelter space, rain shelter space, outside the main tent area, because this is the only one that I tested that does that. And if you're liking this video so far, please do go ahead and hit that like button for me. That does help my channel out a ton. It'll give me a signal to know to make more videos like this one in the future. And it's super easy to do. It doesn't cost you anything. All you gotta do is turn that like button blue, and I'd really appreciate it. And it might hopefully help me make back some of the money that I blew on all of these tents. So thanks very much, and on to the next tent. Tent number two is the REI Base Camp. This tent is currently selling for 549 and I gave it a score of 66 out of 100. So that means it's just one point above the Wawona that we covered previously. However, these two tents are fundamentally different in a number of ways. And I think you'll get an idea of that once we start going through the pros and cons. So let's jump right in with pro number one of the REI Base Camp. The biggest advantage of the REI Base Camp is the weatherproofing. The weatherproofing on this tent is by far the best of any tent I tested. It stood up to the rain great, nothing got in. And even more notably is in the high winds that I had here when other tents were blowing around and even the one tent that I showed broke, this tent stood up like a polyester fortress. It did great in the wind and in the rain. And if you want the best possible weatherproofing out of any tent that I tested here, then this is probably gonna be the one for you. The second pro I wanna mention about this tent is the storage. This might be the best tent for storage out of any of the tents I tested. And if you look on the inside, you'll see that there are storage pockets all the way around the border, except for, of course, on the doors. And I think this tent has more storage pockets on the inside than any tent I've ever seen before in my life. So that's really great for you if you love having pouches all over the place to stash your gear. It also notably has two vestibules, one on each side. And so that's an additional place where you can store gear just outside of your tent. And the larger vestibule is actually big enough that you can put a camping chair in there. So that's something to keep in mind if you like to have some extra space to store gear out of the rain. The third pro of this tent is that it's actually the easiest tent to set up out of the three premium options that we're covering in this video. And that's worth mentioning because if you want a premium tent, but you don't want one that's gonna be really hard to set up, then consider this tent as an option. The biggest con of this tent is actually the ventilation. And that's really an interesting one because one of the reasons that this has less ventilation than for example, the other premium tents I'm reviewing in this video is because it's actually the only tent that I tested that is rated as a 
three to four season tent. And that's important because that means that this tent can be useful for campers who like to go camping in colder temperatures, say in the early spring or in the late fall. But the downside of this feature is that it actually has less mesh paneling, which allows less air to flow through the tent, which means if you go inside, it's gonna tend to be a little bit hotter on a hot day compared to the Wawona, for example, and the tent that we're gonna see after this one. So ventilation is probably the biggest con of this tent. The second con to cover is that this tent is honestly just a bit boring. It's basically just a really high quality dome tent. And don't get me wrong, it's a great tent. But if you want something that's a unique feature, something that's fun and stands out, like the vestibule we saw for the Wawona, or the unique design of the tent we're going to cover next, then you'll probably find this one a little bit dull. Now, who should buy the REI Base Camp? Actually, I think there are three groups of people who would be interested in buying this tent and who I would recommend this tent to. Group number one is people who just want the absolute best weatherproofing that they can buy. This tent does that. The second group of people is going to be anybody who wants to do some camping in a little bit colder temperature, something in the early spring, like I said, and maybe in the late fall. This tent is going to help you keep warmer in those temperatures, but again, it's not a full winter rated tent, so don't go too crazy. And the third group of people that should buy this tent is somebody who wants a tent that is relatively basic, but of a high quality. So this tent is essentially the iPhone of tents. It doesn't do everything, but it does all of the basics incredibly well. And so for those groups, three groups of people, I recommend the REI Base Camp. It's a great option. Tent number one is the REI Wonderland. This tent is currently selling for $5.99, making it the most expensive tent on this list. But for that price, you also get the best quality. This is the Quality King with a score of 68 out of 100. And it's actually also a relatively new tent. I believe REI just released it this year in the last couple of months. So let's get into some of the pros and cons of the REI Wonderland. Pro number one of this tent is the internal layout. This is the only tent on this list that actually has separate rooms inside, made possible through the included room divider. And the headroom in this tent is also pretty unique because the peak height of this tent runs the length of the tunnel design of this tent, rather than just having the peak height at the very center of a dome or cabin shaped tent, which is pretty unique and pretty interesting in my opinion. Pro number two of the REI Wonderland is ventilation. This has the best ventilation out of any tent I tested. If you take the tarp off, you can actually see that there's mesh paneling all the way across the roof, and also it runs down pretty far on the sides. In addition to that, there are triangle-shaped little vents at the center of the tent on each side, and of course the doors also have mesh panels. And so if you like going camping in really hot areas and you want to make sure you get a breeze, this is probably the best tent for that. Pro number three of this tent is the doors. You'll probably remember from some of the earlier tents that I had some complaints and frustrations about their doors. And this door on this tent is basically the opposite of all of those things. It has two huge doors with zippers that are high quality YKK brand zippers and they're extremely easy to use. And it has a nice stowaway point for that door if you wanna leave it open for a while. These are excellent, excellent doors and I love them. <laughs> Finally, I should mention that this tent, the REI Wonderland, also has excellent weatherproofing. It didn't do quite as well as the REI Base Camp. You could tell because of the tunnel design that it wasn't quite as sturdy as the REI Base Camp in the high winds, but it still did incredibly well. There were no rain issues and there were no real significant wind issues. So this is probably the second best weatherproofing tent of anything on this list, second only to that REI Base Camp tent. The first con of the REI Wonderland is the setup. This is by far the most difficult tent to set up out of any tent on this list. And so if you want a tent that you know you'll be able to set up by yourself relatively easily, then you should consider another option. This is just a complex tent. It has different parts than you would see in a more traditional dome style tent, and it is pretty tricky to get up and put together. And so definitely think about that if an easy setup is important to you. The second con of the REI Wonderland is the storage. There's a couple things to complain about when it comes to the storage. First of all, if you look on the inside, it does have two pretty large storage pouches in each corner. However, they're positioned fairly high on the wall of the tent, which could make it difficult to reach if you're lying down. So if you want to stash your phone or a book or something like that while you're lying down in the tent, you might find it kind of annoying to try to like get up to put it in those pouches. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing that this tent doesn't have that the other premium quality tents have is it has no external storage space. It doesn't have a vestibule like the Base Camp or the Wawona. You can actually buy from REI an add-on vestibule that would 
extend the front of this tent into what they call a mud room, similar to what you have on the Wawona tent we reviewed earlier, but that does add an additional $125 to your shopping cart. So it could be really cool, but it does cost some money. So that's another thing to keep in mind. It doesn't have the best storage options in this tent. Now, who should buy the REI Wonderland? Two specific groups of people come to mind for me when I think about recommending this tent. The first group is those who wanna be as comfortable as possible as their campsite, and they don't mind a somewhat complex setup process or the high price tag of this tent. If that's you, then I think you're gonna be really happy with this tent. The second group of people is those who wanna go camping with older kids, say teens or preteens, and you like the idea of being able to give them their own separate room within the tent. That would also make this a good option for you. I'm considering adding a second part to this video, so if you'd like to see me review another tent, maybe one that I've missed here, then please do leave it in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.